All right, everybody, welcome back. It is time for Frame Relay, right? We got wider network protocols that we need to learn. Frame Relay is one of them because you're taking your CCNA. And you may encounter it out there. Uh, but now with MPLS, I'm sure Cisco will be changing uh, their CCNA. Maybe, I don't know when, but I'm sure they're going to start implementing MPLS pretty soon. So, but if... Up to this point, it's frame relay that you need to be concerned with. Uh, that's not to say that you shouldn't know MPLS, uh, but MPLS gets into more into the CCMP levels and definitely uh, the CCIE along with DM, VPN, BGP, things of that nature. Okay, but uh, there are many wide area network uh, type of protocols, like I just mentioned, but we're going to go over frame relay. All right, packet switch technology. All right, the preferred method is what we're going to use all right, to avoid something called split horizon. All right? um, and you're not going to configure uh, frame relay in the, uh, in the test. More likely, you will just be asked questions, you know, split horizon, why is it not sending back, forth, you know, things of that nature. So this is the preferred method that you want to use. Uh, is point to point. Not that you're going to see point to point out there, but this is the preferred method. Point to point sub interface frame relay, uh, which each uh, su each sub interface, okay, is going to be given a DLCI, a data link connection identifier, by the provider. The provider is the one that gives you this DLCI that identifies this router or identifies this particular permanent virtual circuit. That means that DLCI one and two is a connection from router one to router two. And DLCI 201 is a connection from router 2 to router 1. And in this case, DLCI 103 is a connection from router 1 to router 3 and router 3 to router 1 and 301. All right, so and same thing for 203 and 302. That's what DLCIs are. So in Frame Relay, you know that in Ethernet we have ARP, right? In Frame Relay, we have something called inverse ARP, which is a mapping of a known uh dlci to a destination ip address right local because those dlcis are local local dlcis to a to an ip address okay so that's what they are so for me it's pretty straightforward we're just putting on the encapsulation i have my notes up here all right for you uh it's pretty simple you go into this serial interface you don't put the ip address it's like vlans remember sub interfaces all right, and we put encapsulation, but we do put the encapsulation frame relay. We create then the sub interface, and again, I create the sub interface matching the DLCI for visualization purpose. This is not a requirement whatsoever, but it would be nice so you can match the DLCI so you know what that interface is. Now, you will not be able to create a sub interface, all right, if you don't put point to point. You got to put point to point, okay? Then you put the IP address, then you actually assign the DLCI to that particular sub-interface with this command. And that's it. That's pretty much it as far as for the router side. For Because you can see the clock rates are up here. Right? We're now putting clock rates on our serials. It's your provider that gives you the clock rate. This is a very simple DLCI. I'm sure, I think I zoomed in all the way. Yeah. This is a very simple DLCI, very simple frame relay uh, configuration. All right, you can see they're they're all S triple zeros. Make it make it nice and easy. All right, and then the last thing we'll do will be the provider side, right? And then we'll get connectivity going across. We obviously we need uh, routing protocol, IP addresses, and all that. So let's go ahead and start with router one. All right. So we're going to do enable config T capital letters config T. Host name R1. All right, so we're going to go into interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. We're going to put no IP address. All right, and now we're going to, I'm going to up arrow twice. That's the sub interface. Uh, dot 102, which is router 1 to router 2. Point 2. Point. Unable. Oh, I forgot the encapsulation. So sorry. You see? Well, it's a good thing that I did that. That way you guys can see that. Hey, no, I don't think so. You need to put an encapsulation so I can do it for you. 
So let me go ahead and go back to interface S0. Oops. S0 slash 0 slash 0. And then we put in cap frame relay. All right. Now we can go ahead and do our sub interface command. And there she blows. All right. Now I didn't do a no shirt on the physical yet. So I don't get no back and forth type of thing. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then at the end, I'll do the no shirt. Okay. Uh, in cap frame relay, point to point. All right, we're going to put the IP address for this particular interface, IP address. And the IP address for this one is 10.1.1.5. Where they 255.255.255.252. And then we use the frame relay. Yes, I'm going to tab so I don't mess up the typing. Frame relay interface DLCI 102. And hit enter. Now we have another sub interface we create, which is going to router three, All right? So we up arrow, and so we can do the least amount of typing as possible. <laughs> but again, unfortunately, in your CCNA exam, that's not a possibility. You got to type everything out. <clears throat> Interface S00.103, point to point. The IP address, it's going to be 10.1.1.14. Okay. So let's up arrow again. And we'll put 10.1.1.14. And hit enter. And then we'll do the interface DLCI command. Frame relay interface DLCI 103. Because that's going from router 1 to router 3. Right? 103. So we're going to hit enter. And we're going to do a. Well, let's exit. We'll just go ahead and configure rip from right now. Router. Rip. Ver2 net and this is a class full routing protocol therefore we're using a class A address we use a class full boundary 10.0.0 and do not forget the no auto hyphen summary UWR let's verify show start or show run as you would in your certification Let's go down, let's go down, let's go down. We don't care about our fast ethernets, at least not yet. Well, no, we didn't do any lines in this one. Okay, so we got the S00. It's the port, the port is still shut down. We haven't turned it on. The encapsulation frame relay. There's our 102, right? Uh, sub interface, IP address, and the Delsey. Clock rates are there by default on these certain types of routers. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, 103, 103 Delsey, and then the 10114. Okay. Pretty cool. We're done there. Now let's go to router number two. All right. So now we're going to do a connection back, right? Enable. Oh, let me click in here. Enable. Config T. Host name R2. Interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. Enter. Let's do the end cap. End cap. Frame relay. Right, and we'll do no IP address. You know, you need to put it just whatever. No IP address. Uh, just don't put one. I'm not gonna do a no shot yet. Let's go ahead and do up arrow till we get to the sub interface. Now this is gonna be this is router two. So we're going from router two to router one. See that? Point two. Can't forget that. I usually do. Point. Okay. And now we put the IP address, which is six IP address. 10.1.1.6, 255, 255, Enter, and then the frame relay interface DLCI 201. Cool. And let's make sure that that was the right IP address. I don't trust myself. All right, 10.1.1.6. Now the next one is 10.1.1.9. So we're going to create our next interface. Let's space it out a little bit here so we can see what's going on. So we're going to create our next interface, which is going to be from router 2 to router three, all right, point to point, okay. The IP address is 10.1.1.9, okay. And then we do the frame relay interface DLCI, 203. Okay, router, router two, going to router three, enter. Cool, so let's do our router rip, router rip, Ver2, we're using a class A address, only one network statement, 
outstanding. And no auto summary. WR, control Z, let's verify, show start. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little bit of a cold still. All right, so we got our right there, right there. We got our serial triple zero here, no IP address. We got our end cap frame relay, it's still shut down, we haven't turned it on yet. We have our sub interface going from router two to router one with the IP address and correct mask, our correct Delsi. I'm not concerned about this, right? Because really, these are DTE interfaces, the way that they're acting, data terminating equipment. We have 203, router 2 to router 3. Then we have the IP address of 9 with the right mask and the correct Delsi. Awesome. And we did a rip as well. Right? There it is. Cool, cool. Simple, simple. All right. Let's go to router 3. And again, for your examination, this is really as, I mean, as far as you got to go, if you go to the CCNA certification course I have up there, again, you'll get more deeper into all their concepts. But as far as the configuration and the Dell C, so you can see them, this is all it is, really. Um, <clears throat> what am I doing? Host name, R3. And now we have interface. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. S000. Uh, end cap. Frame relay. And yeah, we're not gonna do a no shot yet. Oh, oh no, IP address. Sorry, not that you have to put it, but okay, just to keep same things going on. Now we're gonna do a sort of first sub interface. Now we're gonna do it back to router two. So this is 302 from router three to router two. Point to point. Remember, this is the preferred method to avoid split horizon, especially when using RIP. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, okay, and now we do the IP address, which is the 8, 9, this should be 10, IP address, 10.1.1.10, 255, 255, 255, 252, enter, frame relay, interface DLCI, 302, because it's going back that way. All right, so that's our first one, going back to router 2. Now we need to do one, going to router 1. <laughs> so sub interface. So we're gonna up arrow. Right? We're gonna go back from we're gonna go from router three to router one. Alright. So now we put the IP address and uh that's gonna be thirteen. Okay. My memory, I tell you. Alright, that's gonna be thirteen. Okay. And the right mask. And then the interface DLCI, which is 301. Change that, right? Because it's going from router 3 to router 1. Again, these are not going to be the numbers that your ISP is going to give you, okay? But it's just so you understand what these DLCs mean. Is you're creating that virtual circuit, which is now a permanent virtual circuit, from it used to be the switch virtual circuit, now it's a permanent virtual circuit, going through your provider's network to connect you from router 3 to router 1, or router 3 to router 2, and so forth. All right, so let's do the routing protocol, router rip, version two, network, class full boundary. Remember, distance vector routing protocols, class full boundary. Can't forget the no auto summary. Okay, do WR. Cool. Now, we don't see any green lights or anything like that because I have not turned on any one of these interfaces, okay? If we were to turn them on, then you would see some green lights. But I want to do the provider first before we turn on the, the, the interfaces. So let's go in here because this is really where the connections get made, all right? You prepared this now to be connected, but now when we go here to the provider, they're the ones who are going to actually do it. So we're going to come here, and we see we're using serial one. Then we use serial two and serial three. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right here. Well, because I'll explain here. Let me move this over here, and then not not that. Bring that back down there. It's this guy. All right, let's bring him up here. Let's open him up a little bit. There. I want you to be able to see. Good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we're using serial one. So we go to serial one. 
right? And now you see the LMI is Cisco. You can use, there's three different LMIs, ANSI and Q933A. All right, since it's Cisco, by default is Cisco. If you're using other than Cisco, you can use any of the others, okay? But this is, the LMI is the signaling method, the signaling method. All right, so the first DLCI that we're going to recognize is going to be DLCI 102. And what is DLCI 102? Well, DLCI 102 is a connection from router 1 to router 2. That's what it is. And the other DLCI is 103, right? That's going through serial 1. Okay, so we got 103. So it means that's going from router 1 to router 3. All right, cool, cool. I got that. All right, now we go to serial 2. Well, what DLCs are there? So we got 201. Right, and what is 201? Well, 201 is a connection from router 2 to router 1, and we add that. And then we have a connection to router 3 as well, don't we? That's a next LC 203, even though you don't see it. It's 203, that's router 2 to router 3. All right, and you add that. So we're done. There's only two DLCs that are there, they're on this serial. Okay, cool. Now we go to serial 3. So on serial 3, we have 302, which goes from R3 to R2. And click Add. And then the last one, 301, that goes from router 3 to router 1. Cool. So now it's aware of what DELCs are associated with what serial. Okay. So now it actually comes the time to make the connection so we got frame relay so now we go to serial one all right serial one we got router one to router two so let's go ahead and make a connection back to router one so we go to serial two and there you see a connection from router two to router one so from one to two and two to one click add now we got that connection okay also on serial one we got a connection to router three Okay, so we went in need to make a connection back to router 1 from which serial? Serial 3. And then serial 3, you have from router 3 to router 1. See how you prepped it before? You click Add. So now we made that connection from router 1 to router 2 and back. And from router 1 to router 3 and back. So all we're missing now is from serial 2. We're missing from router 2 to router 3. And from serial 3, from router 3 to router 2. That's the last piece of the triangle that we're missing. And when we click Add, and we should be good to go. All right. So we have the LMI that we saw, right, which is using uh, Cisco. We have the right type of connections for our frame relay. All right. Well, the provider does anyway. And now all we need to do is turn on the interfaces, all right, the physical interfaces. So we go config T, interface S0 slash 0 slash 0, no shut. You know what? Let me copy this because, all right, this is what we're going to be doing the whole time. No shut. Boom. You see everything turned to up. Let's go to this serial here. All right, config T, interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. Let's paste. Talk about being lazy. All right. And then you see the green lights turning on. And then we're going to go ahead and exit here. Interface. I could have done it from there, but it's okay. Zero. Consistency. And then we'll paste. No shut. Let's take a look at our routing table for router 3. Show IP route. And then you see you are getting... Uh, from the RIP, uh, you're getting the 10114, two ways to go. Okay, so RIP is low balancing via two ways it's because it has the same number of hops. So let's ping. So we can ping 10.1.1.5 up arrow, 10.1.1.6, right? 10.1.1.9, but we're directly connected to that network, so we should be good. So we do have connectivity across our network i mean we can check here if you want but if we have you know if we ping we should have oops 
I need to slow down there. So I be out. Come on. Doesn't want to type it right. There you go. So you see it low balances and everything across the frame relay. Now, how do you know that frame relay is really configured? What command? Show frame relay. Now there's many ones. LMI, map, or PVC. Show frame relay PVC. Alright. Things you're really gonna be concerned about, and again, you gotta go into the course to get more into detail. You're gonna be looking at the beckon and feckin bits, alright, which are telling, hey, I'm on the way to the destination, I'm seeing traffic. On the way from the destination or from the source, I encounter traffic. So that's what the feckin and beckon bits are for. The DE bits discard eligibility, meaning, hey, these bits that are coming here, these packets that are going through here are beyond your uh, CIR, right? That is what they promised you. That is, hey, you're going beyond that. So we don't we don't guarantee that. We don't guarantee anything beyond your uh, committed information rate, your CIR. <clears throat> All right, so that's one of the things you want to look at when you're doing this, when you see the print screens. Definitely, uh, when you're reading your books, this is something you need to commit to memory. This particular output right here you see. The next one, they want to look at is LMI. LMI, uh, if asked what type of LMI you're using, I mean, there you go, Formula LMI, Cisco. And that's it. That's all really they're going to be looking at and uh, that I can think of. And then the last one, frame relay map, really, uh, if they have a, a, a map, remember, it's a local DLCI to a destination IP if they have an actual static map okay it's a local DLCI to a destination IP just so you know and the word broadcast must be there the word broadcast must be there because frame relay by nature is non-broadcast multi-access okay non-broadcast but again we have point-to-point -point in our scenario and we have no static mappings anyway all right because we're using rip all right because this is the preferred method so there you go, frame relay, no big deal, no big deal. I'll bring up the notes, make it easier to look at. Again, all you need to remember is make sure the encapsulation is there. Now that you're going to configure it, I don't think you are, but just in case, uh, the encapsulation under the physical interface, no IP address, you create your sub-interfaces, okay? And point to point, which is the preferred method of frame relay. Uh, under each sub interface with the right IP and the correct DLCI pointing to the correct router. All right, and that's it. That's frame relay. Easy as that. Okay, but again, the reason this is the preferred method because you are running a protocol like RIP, which is broadcast in nature. It does RIP run into runs into that situation where split horizon can occur. All right, so we'll see each other in the next lecture, and that will be PPP. I'll see you then.